Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Welcome to our 13th Share Time with Sicha monthly program, the third one in 2022 today. I am Momo Lin from Myanmar, currently the Vice Chairperson 2 of Sicha, Southeast Asian Cultural Heritage Alliance. Sicha was formed in 2019 as a network of Southeast Asian civil society organizations engaged in the cultural heritage conservation works. We have so far members of cultural and heritage organizations from eight Asian nations that formed the Alliance. Since the Alliance have started nearly three years ago, we have worked together to increase awareness and influence on future policies, as well as to help build up the capacity regarding cultural heritage conservation, such as cultural management clinics and short time with CHR talks series like today for sharing knowledge and expertise. CHR is also preparing to convene an international conference in early next year in Bangkok, which will be entitled ASEAN Heritage Cultural Wisdom for Climate Action. We expect contributions from youth to share their thoughts and knowledge on local responses to climate mitigation and adaptation. We encourage you between 18 to 30 to apply. I think the application is the uh, last day today. Chat Time with Sicha is a monthly talk program virtually held on Saturday afternoons. Chat Time series emphasize on the strong connection between local wisdom as part of regional cultural heritage and its contribution to mitigate and combat climate change. All the talks done before are available in CICHA YouTube channel. Today is the third talk of the second series, which title uh, Traditional Cultural Wisdom for Climate Action. I'm very pleased to introduce the moderator and the speaker as well. They both are my personal and professional friends in both architecture and heritage practices. So today, our moderator is architect San Wu, well-known architect and president of Myanmar Architect Council and former president of the Association of Myanmar Architects. Architect San Wu graduated with bachelor in architecture from Rangoon Institute of Technology in 1978 and received MSc in urban planning from the Asian Institute of Technology in 1988. His architectural practice extend to, extended to Malaysia and Thailand before he established uh, Design 2000 Architects, a very successful firm in Myanmar. Architect San Wu is also spending the best part of his life in promoting architectural profession in Myanmar. He has special interest in green and sustainable building designs, as well as lifelong searching for Myanmar modern architecture. I will hand it over to architect San Wu from Myanmar. And San Wu, the floor is yours. Thank you. I, I think you need to unmute yourself. Thank you very much, Momo. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am so glad and proud to participate in Southeast Asian Culture Heritage Alliance uh, chart time webinar series. I also would like to thank to the founders and coordinators of SECHA for arranging such uh, webinars in the unprecedented pandemic time. As a moderator, I'm now really uh, proud to introduce the speaker, Mr. Zor Lin Miat. He is one of the young and successful architects in Myanmar. I've known him since he was a pre-college student. He received his Bachelor of Arts and Architecture from University of California, Berkeley, and Master of Architecture and Master of Science from Columbia University. He is now a practicing architect and work on various projects all around Myanmar. Today, he is going to share his books and experience 
especially on his recent work on the hospitality development in Inli. Uh, as you know, Inli is a very beautiful lake and one of the most uh, visited tourist spots in our country, which is up on the Shan Hills uh, near to Thailand side. Zhou was born in Cham State and it makes us much more interesting from this presentation. I would like all of you to remind all of you, if any questions, please write on the Q&A box. We will select and reply by the presenter in Q&A section later. So may I invite Mr. Zolin Miat to take the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Zia. Let me share my screen. I hope my screen is shared. Um, um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, first of all, thank you, uh, Sicha, for giving me this opportunity to share my experience uh, as an architect, historic preservationist, and above all, a fifth generation in the uh, from a beautiful Inlay Lake. Um, and thank you, Auntie Mo, for inviting me to speak. And thank you, Sia Usan, for your um, introduction. Um, as a person with Inlay heritage, um, I'm happy to present my experiences uh, working on this resort project uh, since 2013. Um, uh, about 100 builders, craftsmen, several engineers and architects, um, furniture makers, and over 130 hotel staff at Hubin Resort uh, worked together to achieve the vision we set out to do for our homeland and for Inlay Lake. And I would like to acknowledge their hard work and their dedication to this project. For those who are not familiar with Myanmar, um, also known as Burma, uh, we're in Southeast Asia. Um, our fellow ASEAN members, Thailand and Laos are in the East. Um, we're also um, sharing borders with China, India and Bangladesh. Um, Hubin is located in Shan State, which is in the Eastern part of Burma. Shan State is a multi-ethnic state and Shan people make up the majority uh, with many other minority ethnic groups. Um, and Inda is one of the minority ethnic groups, which I belong to. Um, historically, it's not a unitary state, um, but smaller fragmented states ruled by various Shan chiefs. Um, at various points in history, um, they were tributary states to the neighboring empires. At favorable times, they also ruled independently, but very briefly. Um, under British colonial rule, many of these Shan states, uh, large and small, uh, were combined into uh, a federation called the Federated Shan States. Today, it has been a unitary state as we joined the Union of Burma in 1948. Yanghui in Shan, or Yangshui in Burmese, um, is located in uh, Southern Shan State, um, and it is home to my great-great-grandmother, um, as she is um, the native Hindu from Kaundang village, um, where Hukin Resort is located. Um, and Bin Lang is where my grandfather and many of our relatives um, grew up. They built around the Inlay Lake. Um, I was actually born and raised in Tangji, um, the capital of Shan State today. Um, it, it's just a two hour drive away from the Inlay Lake. Um, the three things that I want to talk about today are home, heritage, and hospitality, and how they manifest in the work that I do, and how these really shape our values and commitments as we um, develop this project. Um, since I grew up mainly in Yango, um, I know nothing much about my home state or my family history. Um, however, my grandfather always talked about my great-great-grandmother um, when I visited his home in Dangji. Um, he would point to this big picture in the living room and, and tell me that, um, you know, uh, your great-great-grandmother is a pure-blood Hindu, um, as if I wouldn't believe that among all the Chinese-looking grandparents. Um, her picture does stand out with a typical bun on her hat um, that most Burmese women wore in the 19th century. Uh, my grandpa wouldn't say much beyond that. Um, she's, she's a minority ethnic. Um, and, but it makes me curious about um, you know, knowing more about her birthplace. Um, Hoopin project is located 
right on the west bank of Inlay Lake and Kanlang Village. Um, and Hubin was a name uh, my great grandmother gave to uh, a restaurant that she opened in the 1940s and 50s in Yangshui. Uh, it means by the coast of the lake in Mandarin because she is of Hakka Chinese ethnic descent. Um, the Hubin family managed and operated um, this resort only 20 years ago. Um, and they maintain the name because it's a name given by my great grandmother. Um, and it only came back in a circle to the coast where my great great grandmother was born. Um, so when my grandfather visited the lakeside with me back in 2014 at one of the um, cottages that I was working on, uh, something um, evoked his sense of belongingness. Um, he told me, um, grandson, we should be proud that we have built something on this land um, that is in my grandmother's village. Um, to me, that moment felt home. Um, building something where one of your ancestors was from is quite a liberating and fulfilling experience, um, but also felt more responsible. Um, the resort had been, uh, has been managed by the Hupin family since 2003. Um, it was a, actually a campsite for the smartest selection of students from public schools uh, run by the socialist government of, for civic training since the 1960s. Uh, but after 1988, um, it was turned into a resort hotel. Um, the cottages you see on the left were built in the 1990s and the cottages on the right were built um, in the mid 2000s when my grand uncle uh, be began to invest and revitalize the resort. Um, I visited a couple of times when I was still in high school. Um, I've never lived in any of these cottages though. It was always a day trip. Um, we would return to my grandparents' home in Dangji after, you know, um, a day trip to the site. Um, a, a couple of years after my granduncle um, upgraded the resort, both he uh, and his son, my uncle, um, unfortunately passed away a, a few years apart um, and too soon. Um, and today, um, the resort is led by my aunties, um, uh, two incredibly strong women who continue to hold the fort for the Hupin family. Um, and in 2011, um, the Thatch cottages um, built in the 1990s became so old that they were almost beyond repair. Um, Thatch walls and roofs need to be replaced, wood was rotting. Um, although they tried to maintain as much as they could, um, the cost for regular maintenance was, um, has ballooned. Um, and it was time about time for a major renovation. And um, I, I coincidentally graduated from college um, this year in 2011 with a degree in architecture. Uh, and my aunt asked me if I would be interested in helping them with a concept um, to replace these um, Dutch cottages. Uh, who gets this opportunity right out of college? Um, I thought I was going to be interning with um, somebody there. Um, but as, as we talk about what they were envisioning, um, they weren't very sure uh, about what, what they want. Um, this was the time when Myanmar began to open up politically and economically. Um, guests were pouring in, they were quite busy with the hotel operations, um, and the tourism rushed in um, early 2012 uh, because of the democratization um, suddenly and unexpectedly. Um, and uh, they were so busy with guests that they did not have much time to think about um, building anything new. So we decided to take it slow, but um, I began to collect inspirations and data and uh, made frequent visits to the site. Um, one of the first thing um, I requested was the contour map uh, so that I can study the site in more detail. Um, they do not have a proper contour map at all for this 30 acre site. Um, previously, um, they built these cottages along the property line um, without putting much consideration into planning. Um, if you um, look at the typical small villages and towns along Inley Lake, um, they are more like settlements that grew uh, rather than planned. Um, so it's not a surprise for me to um, see that the workforce we have doesn't really have the knowledge about uh, planning or architectural drawings. Um, because my aunties uh, were busy with the inflow of uh, tourism, the only thing we achieved in 2012 was a contour map drawn up. Um, they told me I can take all the time I want to come up with a concept um, and we won't build anything until 2013 after the Sea Games, uh, which Myanmar hosted. Um, um, after which um, they believed they would have some 
breathing room to do demolition and construction um, at the resort. Um, I also went back to graduate school. Um, when I'm free, I would sketch here and there to think about, uh, you know, the site. Um, and I had a couple of ideas that I was ready to um, share when I uh, went back in the winter of 2013. Um, a week before my return, um, I got a phone call um, as I was tagging in New York City. Um, I was told that the resort had been burned down. Um, I was shocked. Um, the culprit was a fire balloon from a nearby village uh, pagoda festival that unfortunately um, carried over by the strong wind and came down on one of the thatch roofs um, and um, it caught fire. Um, thatch roofs are highly inflammable. Um, you know, 19 of these cottages were destroyed uh, completely. Um, and as soon as I arrived back in Inlay Lake in um, January 2014, um, the site was cleared um, and I was told to finish the design in three weeks. Um, I thought I had like two years to do this, but I have three weeks. Um, because they're, they're so ambitious to rebuild this whole section of the resort by the next tourist season, which is in about 10 months. Um, forget the concept discussion, forget the master planning. I have to quickly come up with a design. Um, whatever I come up with, they only ask that it must have the feel and experience of Inlay and Myanmar. Um, and I asked myself what that means. I know it has to be uniquely inlay um, that captures the essence of our traditions and values. Um, and I was already looking for images and paintings um, that are unique to Myanmar. Uh, and I came across this 20th century painting that depicts a moment in time so well. Um, the painting I was looking at uh, was Royal Plowing Ceremony by Seya Cho. Seya Chong was a royal court painter during the reign of um, King Dibo, uh, the last king of Gongbang dynasty. Um, he was famous for depicting the lives of um, the Burmese court. Um, I'll come back to why I, I chose this painting later. Um, and I was also reading a lot in the previous year uh, to learn more about uh, Shansei history um, and my great-great-grandmother's birthplace to find inspirations. Um, and The White Umbrella uh, was a book um, that talked a lot about Inlay, and I learned a lot from this book. And I was 21, and um, this was the first time I was learning actually about my home state and its rich history. Believe it or not, um, I found this book at my undergraduate library in Berkeley in California. Um, it's, it's actually a banned book inside the country at the time. Uh, nobody talked of it. Um, I, I would recommend the audience to read if you want to learn more about Shun State. But after reading that book, uh, I found architectural inspirations at our uh, Yanghui Hall on Yangshui Palace. Uh, Yanghui Hall is um, a two-story palace um, of Shan Yanghui State built between uh, 1913 and 1926 by uh, Sopa Sesomong in the British colonial period. Um, the most notable feature of the hall is the um, seven-tier roof, as you can see, um, because so far, so Somang grew up in Gongbang Kingdom under King Mindong in Mandalay Palace as an adopted son. Um, he was bestowed the sixth tier um, roof by the king as a symbol of royalty and privilege uh, when he became the Sopa of um, Yanghui State. Um, although Yanghui State, like many other Shan states uh, at the time, was under the dominion of the Burmese king, um, it was administered by Sopa uh, or the Shan chief uh, with relative autonomy. Um, and they pay tax and tributes to the Burmese kings. Um, it's actually designed by Mount Mei and Sopa uh, Sao Kam Lang. Uh, the architectural language of the hall is an evidence of the exchange of culture between Shans and Burmas, as well as the influences of new construction methods and materials available during that um, colonial period. Uh, the hall was built by Shan Inda craftsmen, um, led by master craftsman Ungo. Uh, because his name meant Mr. Cry, uh, he was asked to change the name to Mr. Um, Utong Ang, Mr. Success, uh, in order to be more auspicious um, uh, during the period of construction. Um, and you, you might have listened to uh, the, the song um, that was played um, um, before this talk. It's actually an auspicious Shan song that we usually play um, um, before an event or um, any, any kinds of event in, in Shan State. Anyway, um, Mr. Success did bring um, success to the Yanghui family. 
1936, Yang Hui was under uh, the reign of the next Sao Pa, uh, Sa Shui Dai. Um, he married Sa Hong Kong, the princess of North San Hui, uh, Ding, uh, North Ding Ni in Burmese, um, from Northern Chan State. Um, and um, she became um, the Mahadevi or the Queen Consort of Yang, Yang Hui on Yang Shui. Um, Sa Shui Dai became the first president of the newly minted Union of Burma when Burma gained independence from Britain in 1948. Um, and Sa Hong Kong um, became the first, first lady of, of Burma. Um, as described in the book, when um, Sa Hong Kong first arrived in Yang Shui, um, Sa Shui Dai gave her the tour of the hall, um, which she found surprisingly bright um, as light brought in by rows of arching lead glass windows that scatter beautifully across the hardwood floor. If you look at previous architectural typology of palaces in Myanmar, um, you will not find um, a glass, lot of glass windows. Um, she grew up in the more traditional hall palace in North Senwi, um, um, and Yang Hui Hall was rather bright and modern for her. Um, so I have the painting on my right brain and the hall and the history and all that information on the left to shape the design um, for this resort um, in three weeks. Um, and I have to work with this inspiration quickly. Um, I did not also have time to iterate the design as much as we do in the practice of architecture. Um, I also kept the design simple. And after all, I'll be away again in three weeks to New York for another semester for my graduate studies. Um, so if you look at the painting, um, it's almost similar to our site. Um, mountains and fields are in the background, the a large body of water is in the middle ground. Uh, the painting is probably uh, in Nandale, uh, but what drew me was not the palatial architecture you can see in the painting, but the setting. Um, set against the mountains, the ceremonial um, ambiance um, that uh, the artist captured uh, is framed by the people surrounding the royal entourage, especially the distinctly dressed um, officer who underlined the entire landscape. That, in contrast to everything that's happening, evokes such palm and circumstance, a moment in time, a moment in our history and um, um, culture. That's the feeling I want to evoke in the design and architectural setting. I want us to be reminded of um, such moments for guests. Um, and I run through basic concept of the roof line and the diamond roof uh, shape top uh, that somewhat looks like um, those hats. Um, and my aunt loves it right away. Um, I don't know whether she loves it because she really loves it um, or simply because um, uh, she's just in a rush to build. Um, it could be both. Um, and this was quickly approved, uh, but the question remains on how we're going to arrange these individual cottages to evoke the experience um, I inspire from the painting. If we just do a straight bridge and straight alignment of them, um, um, just like the old design, um, it would rather be a lost opportunity to really immerse the guests. So I decided we'll put the cottages on both sides of the bridge. Um, this way, when the guests walk through the bridge, they are immersed in a three-dimensional ceremonial building landscape, left and right. Um, at some intervals, they'll be able to peek into the lake view or the mountain view, uh, but not until they arrive in the room and liberate themselves into the full view of Inlay Lake. Um, as you walk between these cottages, um, you enter a ceremonial path flanked by columns and roof lines. Um, and the challenge was to build the curved bridge on the water. Um, they've never done geometric planning anywhere, and especially on water. Um, so we had to hire a survey engineering team who measured the site previously for us. Um, and our chief builders, Go Luen and Go Nai, uh, were in Da, who have been building on the lake for generations, probably without the survey engineers. Um, and I'm sure this is probably the first time they are working with a survey engineering team. Um, they were curious, they exchanged knowledge and per perspective with the engineers. Um, we didn't ask them to change their names, by the way, <laughs> their names were just fine. Um, for three weeks, um, they worked together to plot every single column in the water uh, with bamboo poles. Um, and they built the bridge first and then the exterior enclosure. Um, when I was designing the detail of the bridge, um, I did not want it to be traditional and um, 
keep the flooring straight and parallel like um, not, they would normally build. And I want to create a pattern from nature of leaves of diagonals. So um, this pattern was born. Um, it, it's where you will, will walk to to your to your room. So um, I, I want to be want to be surrounded with nature. Um, and Golden and Golden, I thought I would be creating so much wastage of wood uh, because um, they will need to cut many small pieces um, in, in some of the uh, uh, for for the patterns. Um, however, um, this design allows us to recycle uh, um, short pieces of wood um, instead of cutting up new long lumber. Um, we actually saved so many short pieces of wood that would otherwise have gone um, to waste. Um, when I returned at the end of summer in 2014, uh, five months after uh, the design and uh, the, uh, the plotting um, in the lake, uh, we moved into uh, interior mock-up. Um, for the interior, I also want to remember what Mahadevi described positively as a bright interior at the hall of the palace. Uh, no more dingy rooms like um, previous cottages. Um, um, this is also motivated by sustainability um, because electricity was not regular in the village. So relying on natural light during the day is the only sustainable option for us at the time. Um, we designed skylights and closed three windows for the bathrooms. Large windows are faced towards the lake and mountains for views. Um, during the day, um, natural light brightened the interior. And I hope that the guests experience what Mahadevi experienced when she arrived in Yanghui, or even better, uh, bright and airy feeling. Um, and the high ceiling for the bedroom um, took the shape of the roof um, and also helps with natural ventilation. Um, one other concern for the environment is the sewage. Um, prior to this project, um, sewage is connected um, to the pit near the land um, through, through a pipe, a sewage pipe. It is collected and decayed uh, naturally in the tanks. Sometimes it overflow um, and get into the uh, lake. Um, uh, during this period, we're talking about increased population in and around Inlay Lake and the sewage discharge and overflow had been a big pollution issue for the lake. Um, United Nations Development Program was financing villages to use bioseptic tanks. Um, we also um, turn to bioseptic tanks for, for our project. Um, they are they're placed individually under the cottages. The anaerobic bacteria will break down sewage and um, discharge clean and safe water back to the lake. Um, it, it's more environmentally um, friendly because we do not need to worry about the, the sewage overflow anymore. Um, we were able to finish this whole project by the late tourist season in, um, in February 2015. Um, 12 months after the fire balloon accident, um, um, Hubin was reborn again, literally, um, from the ashes. Um, our sustainable practice um, endeavor started with, uh, you know, natural lighting, natural ventilation, uh, and high ceiling for better airflow. Um, Bioseptic tank, reduced usage of wood, and replaced with fiber cement boards for walls and ceiling. Um, we hired more than 60 local builders and craftsmen to keep our inlay economy in our hands. Um, did not release the majority of our hotel staff for low tourist seasons, uh, like other um, hotels, but kept them on the payroll to help us with the interior decoration like lampshades uh, and swing curtains. Um, this was a chapter of um, creating home, um, tracing history um, and heritage to imbue this project um, for the hospitable service that we want to um, provide to the guests. Um, and it was a moment of pride when I visited the site with my grandfather after its completion in 2015. I'm recalling together about my great-great-grandmother in our ancestors' village. Um, he felt home and I did too. Um, for the next three years, um, we plan to phase out the remaining thatch cottages by expanding the new design phase by phase. Um, however, I convinced my aunt that for the next phase, perhaps we should uh, spend time thinking about designs that will be more unique. Um, we also listen to the feedback from the guests, um, tour guides, um, and uh, tour agencies. Um, they love that the new upgraded chalets, um, as they are big and spacious, um, I, I felt that it was bigger than um, I imagined. Um, so I was already thinking about downsizing for economic and sustainability reason. Um, 
dwindling um, you know, average room rate was another reason um, because of the intense hotel competition in the lake. Um, it was not helping with the investment either. Um, um, having um, high investment and um, low um, return on investment. So we we have international chain site Novota, which opened in 2015 as well. Um, Sofitel in 2017, among other in the east bank of the Inlay Lake. Um, and this is a good place to share with you more about our environmental heritage that is intrinsically tied to our cultural heritage. Inlay Lake lies um, 2,900 feet above from, from the sea level um, and spans about 45 square miles. Um, prior to uh, 2010, um, there were only a handful of resorts and hotel. Um, it was exploded after you know, a hotel zone in the east of the lake was designated and many investors, mainly from Yangon and Manly, uh, bought up the lands for development. Trees were cut down, land were flattened um, to, to make way for, for these projects. Um, and the UN report uh, came out with an alarming uh, warning about you know, the pending environmental disaster if we do not take action. Um, and the environmental concerns are you know, very much tied to one's home. We're concerned because it's our home. And in 2010, um, Inlay Lake um, faced an unprecedented level of dryness uh, in combination with high temperature. Um, the water level of the lake dropped lowest in 50 years. Uh, in April of that year, which was also one of the hottest months, um, the water surface shrunk by a third. Um, and the famous uh, Palma Pagoda, which was supposed to be in the middle of the water, um, and it's only accessible by boat, suddenly became dry and the lake floor appeared. Um, that was like an omen. Um, there were talks about how our lake is in danger and could disappear within decades if um, the environmental degradation isn't reversed. And the United Nations report identified several issues, um, considerable overuse of chemical fertilizers and pesticides that pollute the water, population growth, um, we're about 160 um, thousand people uh, dumping sewage directly into the water at that time, um, increased utilization of fuel wood um, that reduced the forest coverage around the lake and eroding soil and filling the lake with sedimentation, um, and rapid tourism development with 100,000, 150,000 annual visitors um, also added to the strain. Um, it was a five, fold, five to six fold increase um, uh, just in the last decade. And Finally, climate change. Uh, the climate data shows that um, the length of mon monsoon uh, period decreased as many as 10 days in the last 30 years. Um, that's a 5% decrease in um, average rainfall. Um, and when it rains, uh, the intensity is harder, you know, causing flush floods, erosion, and landslides, which in turn increase sedimentation of the lake. Um, facing these tremendous challenges, uh, we have also made some progress. Um, among many progress made by community leaders with support from the UNDP, um, I would like to highlight a direct benefit to our village. Um, Kaundai village is mostly known as a snack village um, as we produce uh, many local snacks such as rice crackers. Um, we have about 200 households in the village um, and um, they were using conventional stoves um, that weren't fuel efficient. So um, UNDP helped build um, fuel efficient stove um, with 70% of the fund coming from them um, um, for the Kaunai village. Um, and these still reduce the use of wood fuel by um, about 50%. And not only that, they can be used with rice husks or corn cob, which are the waste products after harvesting seasons. Um, if, if you leave rice husk, um, they will decompose and produce methane gas that affects our ozone. So by burning them, um, you not only just get rid of them, but also reduce the reliance on wood fuel. It helps with reforestation, which in turn help, you know, uh, reduce the sedimentation of the lake. Um, and our priority is to reduce the use of hardwood or fuel. Um, any reduction in the wood, uh, usage of wood uh, will directly benefit the lake. In 2015, um, Inlay Lake was designated uh, by UNESCO as Myanmar's first biosphere reserve. Uh, Inlay Lake biosphere ecosystem uh, that consists of the lake, marshland, and the surrounding forest is home to a vast number of flora and fauna. Um, 
Inlay Lake is home to 16 endemic fish species, which means these 16 species only exist in Inlay Lake and nowhere else in the world. Uh, and the Inlay carp, um, uh, the scientific name Cyprinus caprio inda, um, that you can see in the middle of um, this image, um, it's culturally symbolic. Um, it is important for local consumption um, and for household income for many Inda people. Um, it is a fish that Inda people uh, uh, especially cook um, for a dish called Nadoka. Um, unfortunately, the species have been dwindling in number as uh, foreign species, invasive species like tilapia are aggressively um, competing for their food. Among many other species, we also have about 75 species of butterflies. Um, and these are uh, some butterfly species uh, found naturally on our site. You know, I love to walk um, in the resort in the morning or in the evening um, to watch those uh, butterflies. It's, it's really fun um, um, when, when you see, see them fluttering all around you. Um, if you're interested in uh, more learning about Inlay Lake or about its conservation efforts, I encourage you to read the UNDP report and UNESCO designation report in more detail. Um, and I want to share with you more of our experience in developing the next phase of Hubin uh, and keeping those issues in mind. In the following year after we rebuilt, uh, we discussed the health of the lake often. Um, the question I will ask my auntie or the managers at every call is whether uh, we still have uh, water in the lake. Uh, losing the lake means, you know, losing our homes, our livelihoods, and our culture. Um, and my personal mission is to help design something that is going to encompass the issues we talked about um, from culture, heritage, to protecting our species and homes. Um, sustainability is a strange word and it's a very long mouthful word in Burmese um, that's usually not resonate with um, laymen. Um, so we've got to break down and talk differently to send the message across, um, especially to our staff. Um, um, we start with, you know, let's keep our environment clean so that it's healthy for us and for many species that call the lake home. Let's keep the resort organized so that we are efficient in planning and usage of our resources for the health of our environment. Let's keep um, our resort peaceful and beautiful because, you know, peace and beauty is the goal we want for, for, for our home and for our workplaces. Um, and let's protect our home because we live in it. Um, and I would talk about these with, with my aunties, my, uh, our managers and, and, and our staff. And I embarked on convincing them to allow me to uh, create a new design because I know we can improve so much more um, from, from our previous experience. Um, so per cast feedback, some of the terms that came up with, you know, spacious, bright, big. However, given our resources, um, uh, limitations, both materials and financial resources, um, um, it is imperative um, that we reduce as much as we can. And I told my aunt, we're going to promote small but unique kind of living. Um, we reduce the square footage of each unit. Um, smaller living means less use of energy um, and reduction in the resources needed. Um, to, to build each unit. Um, the previous cottages were about 820 square feet. Um, we reduce it to 450 square feet per unit. That's about 45% reduction um, for each unit. Um, we sacrifice the square foot for sure. Uh, um, when our major competitors are boasting around 60 to 1,000 square feet units, you know, 420 doesn't look good when you do marketing. <laughs> but we did it anyway because we believe new ideas and designs can help us offset those uh, loss of uh, marketable numbers. Um, we're going to send a message of sustainable living, um, you know, along the lines of uh, tiny home movements. Um, the inspiration also came from the butterflies. Um, you know, their wings became the central identity of the new duplex cottages. Um, these wings were perfect inspiration for us because we also want to make these units um, uh, duplexes for two reasons. One, it gives us the benefits of sharing the plumbing, electrical wire, sewage tank, uh, resulting in the reduction of um, wiring costs, plumbing costs, and, and uh, a sewage tank. Um, two, we doubled up the units. Um, you know, the playful roof line um, com uh, complements 
the landscape of the rolling mountains and, and waves of the lake. Um, this nature inspired form um, may be new, but um, we still rely on the Inda people for construction. Uh, while many of our international competitors in the east bank of the lake built on concrete pylons, we deliberately choose to continue using the traditional methods of construction. Um, we want to preserve the Inda knowledge of stilt construction method, uh, and we want to provide jobs to native people in Inlay who want to um, improve their skills and expose them to contemporary design and development. Um, we hired about um, 30 to 40 builders for this project from various villages around Inlay Lake. Um, their participation in this project, their expertise are the DNA of what makes this um, contemporary design and Inda's creation. Um, Inda built their houses on stilt in water for many generations. Um, they hammered down wooden logs 15, 20 feet into the bottom of the lake um, without the help of any machine. Um, it's this type of construction um, that is the result of unique in lake flare and a lot of So we. We use a lot of bamboo um, from, from the surrounding um, villages. Bamboo is a sustainable material, but it's only good for scaffolding um, because we don't have the technology to make it long lasting in Italy yet, at least for those type of uh, bamboo. Um, so in order to reduce the usage of wood, 80% um, um, of the interior walls and ceilings uh, are built with fiber cement boards, uh, with wood trimmings. Um, only the backdrop of the bed was wood to maintain warm resort feeling for the bedroom. Um, all our water fixtures are water efficient. Uh, the ribbon clerestory windows brighten up the interior without sacrificing privacy. Um, they provide natural lighting in the room. Uh, we also insulate the roof, floor, and wall because during the summer, it's really hot um, in the valley. Um, and without insulation, it could get, could get hot inside as well. Um, especially since we don't have a double layer ceiling um, or roof like the previous um, um, design. Um, with insulation um, during very cold months, when guests use heaters um, inside, um, insulation will also keep the heat in. Um, and we use bioseptic tanks um, to tr um, treat our, our sewage again, um, similar to the previous project. Um, and to instill it with our cultural notion of sharing togetherness, and friendliness, I made a small addition to the cottage, the Kupye room. Um, the idea come from Kupye or a raised platform um, attached to traditional homes in villages where families and friends gather um, uh, to chat. Usually they are outdoors, but I brought them inside. Um, we share this kind of like tight knit space to discuss daily affairs while eating our you know, favorite lapet, the tea leaf salad, or simply be there for each other's company. Um, we did not put any lounge chairs. Um, we want people to sit on this group yet uh, because we want guests to have a unique experience of living in Inle Lake. Um, the culture of Kupye is about, you know, the sharing the space equally with everyone on the same platform. And it creates a culture of, you know, close-knitted family and community. It tells us that's about our egalitarian roots. Uh, we try to continue continuously um, explore ways for traditions, customs, and values to be integrated into a modern resort. Um, and, and this is one example. Um, here in this space, um, there's an opportunity to spread knowledge um, about our native fish species. Um, so we created uh, a glass bottom. Glass bottoms can be gimmicky, but for us it's to spar the conversation while sitting on this platform. A casual um, conversation might lead one to the conversation of fish um, if they see anything in the water. Um, and you might say, you're literally on the lake. Can't you see the fish out of the window? Sometimes, um, but because depending on the sun angle and you know the reflection of the water, uh, the only way to see the water clearly is when your eyes are perpendicular to the water. Um, sometimes you can spot um, several fish um, taking a break under the shades of the building during the hot afternoon sun. Um, you will also um, see them around uh, evening 3 p.m. where the hotel staff will feed the fish um, near the bridge uh, and school of fish will bubble to eat. Um, and it's, it's, it's an enjoyable scene to watch. Um, an architectural move, um, you know, like this, does not necessarily need to be big and grand. A small insert like this 
sparks the conversation between tourists, guides, hotel staff, and guests why that is there. Um, Guang Mian, uh, my auntie's right hand man, the fish guy, I'm also the project leader. Um, it's a fish enthusiast. Um, they have made, you know, the, the alcove um, where, where we built our cottages, the Hupin alcove, um, as a sanctuary for fish. Um, and we allow no fishing. Um, and he works with the Department of Fisheries to release uh, more than 10,000 fish to date. Um, including the inlay carp um, that's in danger. Um, he will take care of the eggs and fish babies. Um, and actually, there's a pond in front of the reception. Um, and when they grow to a certain length and size, um, um, they will release um, to the lake um, below the cottages. Um, and, and the cottages shade um, provide, um, provide shades um, for the fish. Um, and here's my ne little nephew on his first visit to uh, the Dahlia's College, named after the species of the butterfly. Um, and he is curious and impressed. Um, and it's, it's an opportunity to talk to um, children about uh, com uh, conservation. Um, hospitality should mean more than providing services to the guest. Hospitality for me, uh, we go above and beyond in making sure that the guests feel whole, making sure that they are provided with new perspective, making sure that they are well rested, um, to continue on their journey in life. And Inlay Lake would be part of their story. Our kindness and our love for home, our love for nature um, should pass forward. Um, some of the practices that we deploy, such as you know, natural lighting, natural ventilation, sewage treatment, water conservation, are because of necessity. It is necessary for us to rely on natural lighting and natural ventilation uh, because we have frequent and you know, long electricity cuts. Um, uh, we treat our sewage because we have fish and species we need to protect in the lake. Uh, we conserve water because our lake is drying year by year. Um, we know we have to do these things in order not to, in order to not just survive, but to, to live comfortably. It, it's very simple. Um, protecting our future means protecting um, our homes and our places of work. And in pursuit of many policy, uh, we lose our hairs for you know, crunching the numbers, whether it be financial or be it science like energy usage or efficiency. Um, but equally important for me, it's our roots, our history and our heritage in pursuit of sustainability. If we build buildings, build buildings um, that our people are familiar with, that our people will take pride in, um, that our people can participate in, the more we will love our homes. Um, that can only mean longevity and you know, care for our future. And by no means, um, I claim that what I designed for the new wing uh, is a native design because I myself was educated in the West and have you know, modern influences. Um, but there have been many buildings in Myanmar where decorative roofs were put on concrete buildings by different designers or so-called architects and claim they are Burmese architecture. I personally do not believe that uh, you know, slapping on local decorative motifs um, and call it local design. But what I can, I can tell you is that um, just like the Yanghui Hall that merged Burmese, Shan, and colonial period design um, beautifully, um, our culture evolves and adapts to the needs and changes around us. Um, the sustainable way to improve our lives and improve our culture is by allowing our people to actively participate in this development. In the globalized world, we tend to forget that, forget the natives. Uh, we leave them behind in pursuit of modernity. Um, we, we have to work together with native population to rise together. I hope that you know, the work that we did was a stepping stone for better practices in our natural and built environment for Inlay Lake um, and for a more inclusive uh, future. Um, since we embarked in 2013 um, to a new chapter for Hupe, the experiences my colleagues and I have gotten have been invaluable. Um, and I'm pleased to share these experiences with you today. Um, we have more in store to contribute to the sustainable rest development on our site. Um, what we did were probably some drops in the bucket. Um, as we fine tune and improve ourselves from critiques and feedback, uh, we hope to commit um, to our country's sustainable um, development plans. Um, Myanmar has a sustainable development plan and climate change strategy that were rolled out by our democratic government um, in 2018 and 2019. Um, but tackling climate change 
However, it requires prosperity and stability. Um, because of COVID-19 pandemic and political instability, there is an imminent danger to us. Uh, the gains that we have made in the last decade um, are at serious risk. Um, I talked about home, heritage, and hospitality today. Um, I believe that they are the foundation of life and sustainability. Um, if, if you don't have home, if you don't feel at home, if you're not given the opportunity to build home, if you do not have the moments touched by casual conversations, um, similar to mine with my grandfather, if, if your life is not stable, what is there to protect? Um, when you are displaced, when you are poor, when you are helpless because of wars, um, when you are running for your life, why would sustainability matter for you? Just last month, private monasteries and civil societies in my hometown, Bangji, hosted thousands of people fleeing from the airstrikes in Vaikal. Yangshui received hundreds more, thousands are fleeing and fighting for their lives at this very moment. Why and how can we talk about sustainable development in this context? That's a question, um, something that I grapple with and I don't have the answer to. Um, however, I believe there are many things that the private sector can do and continue to do. Uh, the private sector must continue to lead and fill in where the governments cannot. Um, private sector has the power to change. We can advocate for sustainable buildings so that we are less reliant on electricity, which is also a source of conflict. Um, we must educate our workforce and our management to operate buildings efficiently. Um, we can provide you know, recommendations. For example, in 2007, uh, when my friends um, um, and I formed a student club called He or Mother Earth Home, uh, we sent letters to the CEO of the City Mart supermarket change in, in Myanmar to raise awareness to reduce the use of single-use plastics. Um, and they listened and implemented No Plastic Tuesday that ran to this day. So we have to encourage and persuade business leaders. We have to provide tools and resources necessary to mobilize actions on climate change. And I believe that we can continue to push for sustainable practices in the private sectors, um, even under such um, um, political economic uh, circumstances. Um, and Myanmar climate change strategy also lists um, six priority sectors that we can push our private sectors in tackling climate change. Uh, and we will also continue to contribute as much as we can. And, and I'm hopeful that the experience that I share today will be a useful case study um, for a brighter future that we want, which is building our homes in peace, um, preserving our heritage through um, development, sustainable development, and um, serving people with kindness and generos generous um, hospitality. Um, thank you very much. And I welcome your comments, um, suggestions, or questions um, you may have. Hello. Hi. Yeah. Uh, so um, thank you very much, Solimia. Your colorful, precise, and interesting presentation took my breath away and almost forget to do the summary and comments. Anyway, uh, Zor remind all of us, buildings are not only a physical thing that shelter to us. Much more than that, the architect incorporated in all the other important aspects into his design, uh, such as uh, environmental considerations, cultural considerations, and moreover, to fit into the context of the beautiful Inle Lake environment. I really enjoy and got a lot of valuable information from Zor's uh, presentation indeed. Thank you very much again for the beautiful presentation, Solinia. So um, there are a few questions that, um, the first two questions are about the, the hotel. 
So Zolimia is not only good in presentation, but also good in advertising his uh, design a hotel to the tourists. So the first few question is about any website or any booking to the project and how uh, can they get there? So make a very short answer to these two first questions. Well, you, you can um, go to hoopin.xyz um, or hoopinhotel.com. Uh, uh, but um, currently I'm abroad. I'm not sure um, because of COVID, you know, we have um, uh, disruption in services. So I'm not sure whether um, they're accepting reservation right now. Um, but yeah, you can go to the website um, to check and contact them. Another related question is uh, the tourists, most of the tourists come from Western countries or Asian countries. Do you know that? So Yes, um, it's, it's a mix. Um, our, um, our guests mainly are mainly from um, um, Thailand, Japan, South Korea, uh, for, for Asian countries. And for European, mostly Spanish, Italians, um, and French. Okay. So uh, another question to you, Joe. Uh, is it this site solely unique in Myanmar or any other similar site with similar characteristic and culture background of the local tribes? Um, well, I would think this is, um, I created a unique site, hopefully, um, but there are um, um, a lot of others, you know, unique um, uh, site, um, but I, I don't know whether um, you want me to address um, uh, to all the sites that I um, think is, um, I guess, unique. Um, but building on the lake, you know, um, uh, building with uh, traditional technique, um, it's, 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 it's only, I guess, exists in, um, in Lee Lake. Um, but I, I, I cannot speak for um, other regions uh, because obviously I'm not um, well traveled in the country yet. Um, and I'm not sure if Seattle Zone can um, um, speak to that question as well. I think one day we can explore a lot of places and a lot of uh, remote areas which can accommodate those yeah. who want to visit. Our country yeah. still have a lot left. Yeah, yeah. We still have a lot of places to explore. Okay, then. Uh, our our friend Morty Hanning asks you very good questions. Are there other resorts around the lake that move the same way towards more sustainability? Any of it? Yeah, there there are actually a lot of um, uh, hotels, especially in the last uh, decade, um, focus on sustainability and um, preservation of the culture. Um, we aren't the only one. Um, but of course, um, uh, we have to continue to push uh, many new hotels um, um, towards sustainability. Um, um, and um, I think we, we can still do a lot more um, uh, in terms of this issue. Um, but because, you know, uh, because of the UN report that the Inlay Lake is in, um, in, in a dangerous situation, I think a lot of people were um, um, aware of this and, and want to contribute um, to, you know, um, uh, protecting um, the future of this lake. Thank you. Thank you. And we need much. a lot of support. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, it's the last question. It writes, thank you so much for your beautiful presentation. I would like to know what is the main important thing when you consider about the conservation of the resort in this natural, unique and scenic heritage environment? 
Um, thank you. Thank you for your compliments. Um, I think there, for me, there isn't um, one thing um, that I thought was important. There, for me, there are a host of, you know, different issues, different things um, that always, um, you know, kind of like telling me from like left and right um, that um, I try to consider all these voices, um, not just um, the external voices, but also internal, right? Um, as a designer, um, I also want to, um, I also have to listen to my inner voice, you know, what I want to design and um, how I want to contribute um, in, in addition to all the, the surrounding issues um, and surrounding and competing interests um, um, to, um, to come up with a design. Um, but always, always um, um, at the bottom of my heart is um, to, to learn, to, to keep an open mind um, and to observe what's around um, um, so that um, you know, I can absorb and um, either consciously or unconsciously um, I, I will you know, uh, bring those issues up um, in my design. Um, and that's how I usually um, approach um, designing. Thank you very much for the answer. Uh, hopefully, there's the last question. And also very interesting for all the designers. The question comes from Suzu Jo, And she writes, hello, I would like to know how to collect and discharge the rainwater in the Butterfly Roof Resort. And next question is, I want to know the resort flow level from the foundation that I mean 20 feet or 30 feet approximately. Mm -hmm. So um, there is a, a central um, um, drainage pipe that runs be, um, between uh, you know, the, where, the, where the roof, roof joins um, and then um, they, they are carried um, into a down pipe and then discharged back into, into the water. So we, we don't really um, spe specifically collect rainwater um, because you know Inley Lake collects rainwater, <laughs> so Inley Lake is our uh, collection. Um, so we 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 discharge um, into the lake. Um, um, and um, I think I'm not sure if I understand the other question correctly, but I think you're asking about um, the foundation. We don't have foundation. Um, th those were the columns um, that were you know um, hammered. Um, with, uh, as you can see, see uh, in the video, um, you know, by with human force, uh, hammered down into into um, the ground or the marshland, um, uh, fifteen to twenty feet. Uh, sometimes, um, depending on the softness uh, and hardness level of that uh, um, ground um, under the um, in the lake, um, um, they they will hammer until you know it's no longer like it's no longer going in basically. <laughs> um, so it, it varies, uh, but it's, a, it's above um, 10 to 15 feet from the surface level. So because in Lake Lake, uh, it's seasonally, um, we have changes in water height. It never stays the same. Um, so uh, we need to um, um, keep the, you know, obviously uh, the floor not wet. <laughs> uh, and at, at one point there was flash flood um, and I don't remember which year, but um, they almost touch our floor. So we, we have to move all the, you know, mattresses and all the uh, uh, things in the, uh, in the room um, to a, a higher ground. But that's rare though. Um, Thank you. So uh, the time is almost up, but I have two more questions. Mm -hmm. One comes from Brit Kayan. And uh, it said, uh, thank so much for the great presentation. Out of wonder, where is the resourcing location of the materials used for the construction of hotel? Does traditional skills and techniques? Sorry. Does traditional skills and techniques consider as impacting, impacting factor for sustainable construction, how about the main maintainability of the hotel considered? 
Mm -hmm. um, so there, there were different type of words uh, that we um, source um, and the product manager is, um, knows local sources where we, we get a different type of words. Um, and, and I have to rely on their knowledge um, in terms of what type of word to use for, um, you know, for piling a certain word would, would not be suitable to, to use for the, you know, um, for, for the, the columns in the lake. Um, so I, I really do rely on them and their knowledge and their experience. Um, and even like the joineries, right? The way that they, um, obviously we cannot get like 20, 30 feet uh, wooden log. Um, you have to connect them. And the way that they connect, you know, um, all, all that stuff, um, it's coming from, from their side. Um, as an architect, I just have to, uh, for me, it's more like, a, you know, putting these um, things together um, to make a building. Um, and I really value the inputs um, because um, then I'm, I'm giving them certain ownership of the design as well, right? Um, and at some point, you know, um, I, um, after I give, for example, um, there was a case where I didn't want a beam at a certain um place, especially above the bed. Um, and they they thought there was a beam there and they thought they have to put it there to, uh, to you know, maintain the structure of the building. But since I don't want it there, we had to you know, work around the solution. Um, and, and, and the way to remove that beam uh, was to strengthen a column um, that it supports with uh, uh, a type of metal clasp um, so that, you know, um, the structurally, it, it doesn't like, uh, with a sheer force, um, it won't fall. Um, so th those kind of um, technical details, I, I rely on them um, a lot. Um, almost like when, you, when we design a modern building, you know, we rely on the um, civil engineers, structural engineers to do it. Um, similarly, I have to rely on, on their knowledge and their experience. Um, eh, there, there were so many questions in that. <laughs> I don't remember. But Hopefully I answer most of them. Yes, you did. Uh, thank you very much. So, and uh, the time is almost up. So there are a few questions left, but the last question for you, I'll combine two anonymous attendees questions into one because it's quite similar. The first mm -hmm. question is how to maintain timber frame structure which piles are almost widely used as traditional weight? And the second is, do you think the traditional architecture and construction of Inle can be adopted in the frequently flooded, flooding regions? Um, so um, I guess the, the, I guess the timber structure, um, they, put on a certain kind, um, a type of coating um, uh, to treat the, um, to, to treat those columns. Um, and um, the wood that they use, I think it was in uh, engine wood, uh, but it, it's, it's a, a hot wood that, uh, you know, that's treated and then um, they, um, um, that's, that's their way of doing things. I don't know the exact detail, but I trust them. And then, you know, I let them do it. Uh, because they've been doing it for you know hundreds of years um, through you know passing down generations. So, um, and um, in terms of uh, maintenance, we have to you know um, of course uh, either paint or uh, put on a certain architectural coating um, um, to to protect the wood, um, the exterior um, of the buildings. Um, other than that, it's it's quite easily maintain maintainable. Um, um, and you know it has that um, petite, not patina, but it's it's more like uh, the rustic looking, you know, um, lodge. Um, it's it's not like perfect, but you you can you kind of find uh, uh, in, in, imperfect things uh, beautiful um, because you know uh, it it varies in shades and colors. Um, but in in terms of maintainability, uh, they they will always um, after a year or two they will put on some architectural coating. Um, or paint in, in, in some of the, the previous um, projects 
um, because red it's um, they're kind of like they love that color <laughs> um, so um, they, they put in those red coating and uh, the other question I think uh, was um, flooding if if this kind of um, technique can be used in, in flooding region frequently flooding I'm not sure because you know uh, flood depends on you know the force of nature. <laughs> um, if, if it's a flush flood with lots of water force, I think um, the columns need to be stronger. You know, you need to consider several other things. Um, but for our, for the lake, usually it's calm. Even when there is flush flood, it will be mostly rise, the, the rise in water level rather than like, you know, a, a huge force of water uh, falling into, uh, into the structure. Which, which will definitely impact um, um, the buildings. So um, for me, I think um, it, it really depends. Um, I, 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 I wouldn't just like, if, if you need to understand the context uh, before you know, we apply uh, similar techniques in, in the flooding region. Oh, thank you very much, So mm -hmm. uh, Before you do the wind up, uh, Works uh, here. C. Top Wong wants to know: Did you apply any sustainable and tourism awards or any kind of awards? Have you applied any? Um, I I never personally applied, um, but I think um, the Ministry of Tourism um, awarded the hotel. Uh, I think part of their um, green hotel initiative campaign. So um, there was that, but we didn't really actively, uh, I guess, look for awards um, because I think um, we, we really um, just believe in what we do and we love what we do um, and not necessarily, you know, uh, chasing the awards. And sometimes I, you know, those applications, uh, it takes um, a lot of time, you know, uh, compiling. And um, we don't have the, uh, the resources or the time to, to actually um, apply for that. Um, but um, in, in terms of keeping the stakeholders uh, involved, um, it, it's, I mean, Inlay is such a peaceful place and everybody is so kind, <laughs> um, you know, chill, I think, um, uh, that, you know, um, I think everybody who, who works there um, love uh, living there. Um, and I, I don't think, of course, there will be um, some, you know, a New Year party or annual party that they will hold for the staff. But um, other than that, I don't think um, we do anything out of the uh, normal, out of our way to um, find awards. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Ms. Chairman, do you have any time or just to need to wind up right now? Because one question left. I think it's fine. Uh, to okay. Answer. Okay, thank you. Uh, the very, very last question. And it, it's okay. a good one. It comes from our good old friend, Wynn Kinzor from Australia. Uh, he writes, thanks for the great presentation. Are there any redevelopment regulations for Inlay Lake? It's very important. Mm. They, um, not that I know of, um, because uh, when we um, develop this, of course we have to submit uh, you know, our, our, our drawings and our design and what we're doing um, to the relevant ministry. Um, um, if, if we're building on the lake, we have to um, um, involve the Ministry of wild, Wildlife, uh, I think, um, to, uh, to get their approval. But there isn't a specifically, you know, um, Regulation, re regulated document, which said, "Oh, you cannot do this. You cannot do that." It's it's more like um, you have to approach 
uh, with case by case, um, um, approach it case by case. Um, and, and that's why, you know, um, the, the, the development boom in the, the last five to 10 years um, put really a big strain on in Lay Lake. Um, and, and now when COVID hits, a lot of these hotels, a lot of the resorts are sitting empty actually, you know, and, um, and maintenance, um, a, a continual op operation is going to be a, a huge challenge for, for all of us in the lake. Yes, uh, may I add up a little bit? Yeah. Yes, for sure. You, you, you need to get approval from Ministry of Forestry and Environmental Affairs. For sure, they are the key persons who you know, inspect the design mm -hmm. is uh, doing suitable to the lake or not. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you for uh, oh. adding that. Uh, yeah.